There's been a lot of interest in the supercomputer data cluster cooling system here at Giga Texas, and I've been asked to do some deep dive videos. And so today I thought I would do so, and thank you very much to one of my viewers, Seti Park here on X, has put together a excellent discussion, an article about the cooling system. And he even did some research into the patent that uh, covers the construction and design of this cooling system. The link is at the bottom of the screen. It will be in the video description as well. I also like to point out that the patent was granted on 24 December 2019. And you may think that's been a long time. How is that related to Giga Texas? That's a very good question. We know that Tesla was thinking about this all along. And way back in my video, 26 July 2021, I covered this uh, tweet by Elon Musk talking about how the factory was going to grow an additional 500 feet. That's exactly what we're seeing now. So they were clearly thinking about this data cluster and what would be needed even back then. I also want to say thank you to my Patreon, Steve Davis, for his help and information about the cooling system, the components, and what I should be looking for as far as equipment deliveries on site. So before we go into the main discussion, let's take a quick look at how a water-cooled cooling system operates. Water-cooled chillers release thermal energy from the refrigerant in the condenser to a cooling water loop, which is then pumped to a cooling tower where it is cooled for reuse. Water-cooled chillers are more costly to install, but they are more efficient and are often used in larger commercial properties with higher cooling loads. Now, chiller systems have one or two extra water loops involved with the heat transfer process, and that's because the refrigerant receives thermal energy from liquid water instead of air, and a different type of heat exchanger is required. Let's look at how this is installed at Giga Texas. Now, based on the patent, we know it's a dual mode system that combines mechanical chillers, as you can see as an example in the upper right, and the cooling towers that are most visible here in the southeast corner of Giga Texas. In addition to that, there are these large water pipes that direct the water between the extension and the cooling plant. They are underground, and they also have a set of thrust blocks, as you can tell with these concrete pieces that have been installed using formwork in the trenches. Now, this is required anytime there's a change of direction to prevent the pipes from moving or fracturing, and it basically transfers the load to the trench system and away from the pipes. Unlike conventional systems with a one-to-one -one ratio of non-mechanical to mechanical cooling, Tesla's design uses a three-to-one ratio, which significantly increases the use of more efficient cooling methods. With this image, a good view of the manifold system that was installed on the ground floor underneath the slab, and here the forms and rebar were in place. You can see those manifolds sticking up out of the rebar. Once this is finished up with the concrete, which has already happened, this is most likely the area where the chiller units will be installed. This system does have a variable capacity and it's able to provide full cooling throughout the year, adjusting output based on outdoor additions. This image here gives you another vantage point of the installation prior to the ground slab being poured. Thermal storage integration is a key design feature of this installation, and it's necessary to manage peak loads during hot and humid hours by storing excess cooling capacity generated during cooler periods. This image shows you the tanks that have been installed in the southeast corner of Giga, Texas. I believe this is part of that thermal storage tank installation. Let's use this diagram to put it all together. Now, there are multiple cooling towers, and they provide non mechanical cooling and are the primary cooling units for this installation. The chillers provide mechanical cooling when ambient conditions don't allow for full cooling via the towers. And uh, this is what we're gonna see on that ground floor. Heat exchangers allow heat transfer between the cooling towers and the chilled water loop. And that chilled water loop circulates through the system bypassing components as needed based on various conditions. Now the system operates in three main ways. On cold, dry days, all towers can be used for direct water cooling. On mild days, water may be partially cooled by the towers before going to the chillers. And on hot, humid days, the water bypasses the towers and goes directly to the chiller units. Heat exchangers have two independent circuits, one for the process, one for the service media. They work by removing the unwanted heat from the process and transfer it to the service media, which is usually water or a water glycol mix. 
Water-cooled heat exchangers are much more efficient than the comparable air-cooled heat exchangers. There are basically three kinds of the water-cooled heat exchangers. The shell and tube, which is the widest range of applications and capabilities, and you can see that in the upper right. The plate style, which is most efficient and most compact in the center, and spiral, which is efficient, and that's ideal for lower volume with high pressure applications. At Giga Texas, I believe we are going to see the plate type heat exchangers installed, and here is the reason why. At the west side staging location, we see these Evapco fan units and also the plate type heat exchangers waiting for installation. This is a good close-up view of the heat exchangers and what they look like. They are red and silver. There are many of them, and I do expect to see these installed in the south end for the cooling system. Now you may ask, what about the Evapco fan units? Where are they going to be used? And I think that they will also be used in the south end, very similar to what we see here back in 2021 when similar units were installed on the fourth floor above the 4680 production cell portion of the main factory. And at the time, this is what that installation looked like. If we go today onto the roof, we can see the cooling and exhaust ductwork assemblies on top of this area. Now, if these are installed on the south extension, as I expect, then I am looking to see these kinds of ductwork and cooling unit enclosures installed. So something to look forward to as time progresses. Finally, I thought I would give you a view of how all of this is coming together on the second floor. This is looking in from the west side. On the left is where the large cooling system water pipes run, and we can see the mezzanine where the supercomputer cluster is being installed. In addition to that uh, mezzanine, underneath is where additional cooling piping and other equipment is being installed, and there's some temporary cooling system pumps and equipment that are already installed being used to either test or prepare the system as it continues to evolve. So anyway, this is how it is all coming together on this part of the South Extension. I hope that you enjoyed this discussion about the cooling system for the supercomputer cluster, some of the information from the patent, the design, the construction, and some things that we can look forward to in the future as the construction continues. I would like to thank my viewer, Seti Park on X, and my Patreon, Steve Davis, again, for their help in researching and the assistance with making this deep dive analysis possible. As always, thank you very much for your support and for watching. Take care.